Welcome to another video. We are going to create a bowling ball within SOLIDWORKS. So, within my previous video, I created a bowling ball within CATIA. This will be just a quick overview of that. As we can see over here, we have the part, the initial part body, and we have a pocket over here. But this cut will go starting from the top on the Z axis, and therefore, this is not, let's say, um, as intended. And within CATIA, we had to project those sketches onto the surface, and we use the project tool for that. And we're going to see that the workflow from servers is very similar to the one in CATIA to do this. So let's get started. I will create a new part. I will go on the right plane, and I will trace a sketch, starting with a circle from the origin. I will add the diameter will be 220 in this case. And now using a center line, I will cut half of, of that circle. And when I will go to features to revolve boss base, we're going to see that soldiers will see that this sketch is currently open. As you can see, it is open in the middle. Therefore, we can um, have this automatically closed. So I will just hit yes, because yes, I want this to be closed. And we're going to see that SOLIDWORKS will fill that in. Therefore, we can define the revolute. Now, in order to do that cut, I will start from the top plane, and I will create a reference plane. Just like within CATIA, I will go to 150. So, not caps lock, I will press tab in order to have that added. As you can see, we see the millimeters over there. And within this newly defined plane, plane, I will create a circle. So I will add the same values as within CATIA. So this will be 20 millimeters. I will create another circle over here, diameter of 20 millimeters. And using a smart dimension, I will have this constraint to be at 35 for the vertical distance and also for the horizontal distance. Now, within CATIA, I could have mirrored this directly using the, um, the axis from the origin, but over here I will have to define a center line, and afterwards I will select the circle, go to mirror, mirror about, and I will create, I will select that center line. And we have that sketch defined. Therefore, we can go with the feature, we can go with the cut, and I can have this cut on a distance of 70. I will also press tab to have that added. That means that over here, this will, this cut will go 20 millimeters, as you can see over here. Since this is, uh, this is the um, the surface of that uh, initial sphere and we can have that added. So this will be the same as the cut that we did over here within uh, the first part body. But now we want to change that cut in order to um, to go along the surface. So to do that within SOLIDWORKS we can make use of the surface or surfaces tool over here. If you don't have this enabled, you can right click, go up to tabs, and you can activate the surface if you have this within your solidor. So keep that in mind because you also um, have to have that um, module within SOLIDWORKS. For this cut, I will have this suppressed. So that means that the feature will not be de deleted. It will only be deactivated, if you are familiar with CATIA. That means that we're going to have the sketch over here. And now we need to do that cut, again, for a distance of 20 millimeters inside the sphere. I'm going to go up to surface, and we have the possibility to create an offset surface. Within the offset parameters, I will select the sphere, and we're going to see that by default, the newly created sphere will be positioned on the outside. So this will be 
10 uh, millimeters I will type in 20 but I will also reverse the direction so using this flip offset direction now we're gonna have the newly defined surface inside our existing surface so I click OK this why it's important to work with surfaces as we can see over here within the part tree we have the solid body which will be the revolve but we're also gonna have the surface offset that is not visible by default since it is located within our initial geometry therefore I have the possibility to hide that and we're gonna see the the surface within if I'm gonna go within a section view we're gonna see that this will be a surface based shape so that means we don't have material on the inside this something that I like within Katia is that by default surfaces are created with a different shader so currently I have the materials enabled but if I'm gonna go with a let's say a different shading we're gonna see that this will have a different color so usually surfaces are created with yellow within uh, within Katia so I'm not gonna reverse that but I will hide the original part just to highlight this so this is the default gray shader that is within a part design it is the same one as over here within SOLIDWORKS the main difference is that over here we're gonna have the um, surfaces for example this um, extrude that will be with um, a different color which in this case will be yellow they are currently perfectly overlapped that's why we see this um, let's say this pattern on the texture because they are overlapped so back to SOLIDWORKS we have this um, section view I'm gonna have this removed and for example if I will also enable the solid body to be visible in the viewport by going up to show now if I will go and do a sketch uh, not a sketch a section view we're gonna see that I will only be able to view that inner surface if I will move my mouse over here and we're gonna see that yes we have another boundary another surface within the existing one and now for the cut we can still use the same extrude cut it is just important that we have the surface that will be used as a reference created afterwards so if for example I will position this um, before because we see the surface extrude we have uh, its position over here so the offset after the cut that means I can select this sketch I can go to features and I can go extrude cut and this is important at the, the direction I'm not gonna choose blind we can choose this to go up to surface and now we ha have to input the surface over here therefore I know that the surface where I want my cut to stop will be surface offset one so in this case since we have the sketch created uh, let's say previously then the offset surface we can directly select that and if I will just click OK we're gonna have that cut go all the way over there so this is the difference from the default extrude cut or a cut that goes up to surface and uh, this is also visible over here within the section cut as we can see that cut will go all the way over there now the cut doesn't go up to surface like we had over here in, um, in Katia for example we have these lines position over here and these lines were created as the normal tangent direction for the cut so within SOLIDWORKS we also have the possibility to work a little bit differently over here therefore I will suppress this I will leave that section and now with this sketch which is sketch 2 I have the possibility to have this used as a split line and within the split line I can make use of the projection type so within a selection we're gonna have the sketch and the surface will be 
our sphere, so this one. If I will click OK, we're going to see how that will project over here. So this is the same workflow, just like um, within Katia. As you can see, we have the same projection position on, on the bottom and also on the top where we had that projected. Within my videos, when I uh, design uh, the same, let's say, parts, both within Soidos or Katia, I will mostly go uh, back and forth between those two uh, software solutions to highlight, let's say, the, the difference between those and how you can um, design uh, the same components using different uh, approaches. So now we have this. Since this is a split line, I have the possibility to have those deleted. So within the surface, we're going to have the delete face. We can also activate delete face by right clicking over here. We can go over here and we're going to find the delete uh, face. So in this case, I will just have this deleted. I don't want this to be patched or fill. I just want the material to be removed. We can also select multiple. So within the same delete face, we can select, for example, two of those faces. And now we can also project the same sketch onto the surface offset that we have over here in the interior. So that means that we're going to go and do another split line. In this case, again, the selection will be our sketch. I should sketch over here at the top and we're going to have this projected onto the offset surface which is this one let me do that because <coughs> i double clicked on that therefore we're going to have the sketch which will be sketch 2 and we want to have this projected i'm gonna zoom in and i will select the face over here as we can see now we have the face inputted over here and I will click OK and that will create additional geometry over there. Now within the surface we have the deleted face, one surface which is this one with those three cutouts and we have the other split line position over here. Now we have the possibility to join those if i will go to surface in this case we can have a lofted surface or a boundary surface those will work the same considering the fact that we have the top and the bottom profile over here I go for lofted surface within the profile section we can add those so the top cutout afterwards the bottom projection keep in mind that for lofted surface you can change that so try to keep them on the same uh, direction for example if one of those will be at the top and one uh, over here you're gonna have the twisted surface over here so i will position both to be on the same side over here we could also add in a guide curve over here which will change the direction of that but for this case study i will leave it as a surface loft and afterwards you can click OK and that will create that surface. I will create the same for the other cutouts. So we have another cutout over here. And uh, as you can see, we have this that at least two profiles are required. This is because I had that selection still uh, selected. So it's important to not have anything selected when you are doing lofted surface. So those won't be automatically completed over here so we have those defined now we need to use the neat surface in order to join those so i will need this one which is called delete face with the surface loft four two and also three over here and we can also have all these merged by clicking on the merge entities Therefore, now we're only going to have a simple, um, a single, let's say, uh, surface over here, and we, which will be called surface neat because this split line, this is the previous one which was initially offset. 
And now in order to define this as a close profile, we're going to need to have those surface field. I'm not going to use planar surface because that surface is not planar. Therefore, we're going to use fill surface. And we're going to have those filled in. So I will go each with its own fill over here. And all those should be filled now. And at the end, we're just going to need everything. So in total, we're going to have four selections. And we're going to click OK over here. And within the final need surface, we can also specify that we would like to create a solid body for this. And if I'm going to have that checked, click on OK, we're going to see that the solid body will appear over here. That means that now, if I'm going to go within a section cut, let me change that plane, we're going to see the section cut and also that uh, that cutout for the holes. So in this case, the cut is, um, let's say, quite similar to the original one, where we just added that uh, surface. So this is important if you want to create, let's say, more advanced cuts that uh, follow different curves, you will need to have those defined, just like we had those added within the Katia video. So let me also add the material for this one, the appearance. I will search for the stone architectural label. And we're going to see over here that we have the slate 2D. I will have this apply to the whole part. And just like within Katia, we're going to see that the mapping will not uh, be very well defined over here, since we have a spherical object. And I'm going to jump over here within the Display Manager. I will select the Slate 2D material. This is the name of the texture, as we have it over here within the Appearance Library. So I have that edit, edited. And uh, go for the mapping. And we're going to see that the mapping is set over here to Automatic. And I will change this to Spherical. And you're going to have the same um, a wrapping over here. We can also change the material size, <clears throat> just like we did um, in Katia. For example, I can type in over here 50, and that will change overall the material. But on the top, the, the mapping will be, let's say, quite similar to the one um, that we had over here in Katia. So let me just have this re-enabled, height, body 2. And as we can see, we have um, bad wrapping over here at the top of the sphere, the sphere, just like within SOLIDWORKS. So usually this is why it's important to use a specialized software for texturing, such as Keyshot, or we can make use of um, the free Blender software. Since over there we're going to have a better um, mapping. And we can change various aspects regarding this. But SOLIDWORKS is not uh, specially designed uh, to address this texturing. OK, so this is how you can create a bowling ball within uh, SOLIDWORKS. I also encourage you to check my video regarding Katia. And I will also create a video for Fusion 360 Blender and also 3ds Max. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will position a similar video over here to the left. I will put a playlist. This playlist will be for SOLIDWORKS over here at the top and also a subscribe button.